Chancellor's Log, February 14th, 1940. The British are getting bolder, whereas before they didn't dare run a convoy under the noses of our battleships, they now very much try to do just that. Both Mecklenburg and Preussen have had an encounter with a convoy. The crews of these battleships were very excited to finally see some action again after months of just patrolling the North Sea. After reviewing the reports, I'm thinking it's almost more efficient to have a battleship do a patrol than a destroyer. The battleships take less damage, are capable of doing more damage themselves, and are much more of a deterrent than just a destroyer. Of course, it's not very practical. Our battleships are far more expensive to operate than even a group of destroyers, they need more logistical support, and if damaged, they usually take longer to repair. Fortunately, our light cruisers of the Stitten class are just about ready to serve. These light cruisers have decent speed, solid armament, and enough armor to survive encounters even with heavy cruisers. It will take some time to train the crews of these new light cruisers, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue. In the meanwhile, in the Mediterranean, the Austro-Hungarians and the Italians continue to slug it out. I have lost count of how long this war has been going on. Neither party seems to be making much headway. At this point, I'm not even sure the warring parties know what started the conflict in the first place. Before long, it's going to be one of those generational conflicts that just continues because the next generation is brought up hating the other side. For now, I'm not paying too much attention to this conflict. It doesn't concern us. We'll just see who's left standing by the time that we're fully ready to deal a decisive blow in the Mediterranean. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, the Big Guns Campaign, episode 45. For the first time, that we're actually seeing one of the Stettin light cruisers being brought out to service. Um, it's an interesting situation, as always, you design a weapon of war, and then the weapon of war takes a while to actually be completed. Stettin class were no different. These were designed to take on the destroyer threat, and to some extent the light cruiser threat for the British. This ship will get the opportunity to do just that. Her 7.9ers are going to be required to take down a light cruiser as the destroyer, this is the V-33, takes care of a bunch of transports. This means that the Stettin is two knots slower than the original ship class that I was using for this, which is the, I believe they were the Arene class light cruisers. They are, however, um, a bit more modern. They have a Generation 2 radar, they have a Generation 2 sonar, they firing semi-armor piercing shells out of auto-reloading turrets and gives them a reload of 10 seconds. These ships are really quite dangerous. Or at least that's the plan. Whether that actually happens to be true, we're about to find out. As for their armor, we got 5 inch main, 5.2 inch 4 to balance the ship out, 2 inch on the superstructure. And the ship in itself is uh, really quite small. It's five and a half thousand tons, which is not that much bigger than my destroyer. With that small ship, five and a half thousand tons, um, I'm generating a smaller target profile. And that helps me to close on the enemy without being detected. This worked against this light cruiser already. Uh, considering the positioning here... Thinking it might be more beneficial to use the Stettin against the convoy. And try to just bypass it on two different sides. They have detected the torpedoes, which were sent out by the DD. Of course, they're not going to do much. I would suspect that this light cruiser has sent its own torpedoes against the Stettin back when she was sailing this way. So that should not be an issue. P-33 might be in a fairly decent spot to... Ooh. Okay. Uh, to cripple this ship. So that the Stettin can use those fast-firing guns to deal with the convoy. And she has detected them. 16 kilometer range, which is what we have. So let's go. Uh, this has medium bulkheads. Yeah. Once again, the destroyer's guns are potentially too dangerous. To pull this away a little bit. What the fuck are those torps? 
It wasn't them. Statin. Status. 2.9s. When are they going to get into range? Nine and a half kilometers out. Okay. Now, this is excellent target practice for the Stettin and her crew. Because they don't have a whole lot of experience yet. The Stettin is so new that the crew hasn't had properly... Uh, well, this, they have proper time to really break the ship in. So they're only a seasoned crew. Meaning they don't get the full 30% bonus in accuracy that you see on the destroyer. They don't get the aiming time re uh, buff. They don't get the reload time buff. And they don't get the damage control buff. Which is fairly uh, substantial. Calypso is trying not to sink. Seemingly succeeding in that. Yeah, this is excellent target practice for the Stettin. Quite a decent ship. Um, not strictly very seaworthy. With that very low draft. Very low beam makes it nice and fast. And relatively cheap. Because these things only cost me 20 million. Uh, making them cheaper than the destroyer. These torpedo tubes are going to cost the destroyer another million. So there's the difference. But they do carry bigger guns. They do have a secondary armament. And arguably for what I am facing now, which is just a bunch of convoy hunting, the Stettin is a perfect ship. Even though this is not what she was really designed to do. She was designed to hunt down destroyers. She can. But if a light cruiser happens to get in the way, or a convoy needs destroying, she can do that too. Burden the witch. Extensive fire. Which should... Quite a few of them. If they have your 4, 3, 2, looking at 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 ships. Okay. By now I've sunk so many convoys I barely keep track. Could you not? Could you not? Thank you. Blow holes in my destroyer. Okay. Stetson, I need you to speed things up here. Yep, that's exactly it. That is exactly it. I need you to wipe these guys out faster, because then the DD can finish off their light cruiser. Here we go. 67%. We need to get to 75. Should be there. Ah, mission accomplished. Okay, so... Yeah, we got 80. I'm gonna finish off these three. I'm gonna have the DD already go green on the guns. As long as I can keep her above 90%, that'd be great. Means I don't have to spend more than one month in dry dock. Come on, friend. I know you're there. Eight clicks out. There. Are you coming directly for me? No, you're running away. Probably your better bet. Are you done yet? No, you still got three more. What are your guns doing? Oh, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. Nice shooting there, Stettin. 181,000 damage on your first actual combat deployment. I think that's a really nice number. Good effect. Should train the crew nicely. Level the guns. Train the crew to reload faster as they just have time and not a whole lot of stress to do it. Speaking of stress, the Calypso is trying to add some stress here to the V-33. My Calypso. I know your stern is already flooded. Bypassing you is a bit dangerous. But it looks like you'll go down just nicely. Yep, more flooding. 5%. 4-ish. 3. Really? You're gonna sit there with 3% buoyancy? There you go. And she did. Okay, so that's a whole convoy. And I'd say that makes Stettin's first deployment an absolute success. Nice amount of victory points. Uh, they get some for showing up and they lost another bunch of crew. 15 transports down. I wonder how much that's going to impact their economy. And I might need to send another ship out to replace the Stettin or replace her sister. Well, not her sister. Yeah, still 193 billion. Uh, check, check, check. Everything's blockaded. Perfect. Well, later, here's another interesting fight. 
It seems the British have brought out a new battlecruiser class. This is the battlecruiser Northumberland. Displacing 51,951 tons, costing 200 million. That's an expensive ship. They carry 17.7 inch guns. Um, they are very fast. 39.7 knots, which explains the price tag. Facing them are the Lippa of the Hertha class. This is the modified upgraded Hertha class, 1939. And the Ariadne of the Sea Adlers. Um, I might need to do the Sea Adlers a bit of a favor and refit them, because they have seen a lot. And it's now 1940. They haven't been receiving a refit in five years. Ariadne has been slightly damaged. Apparently she was eager to join this fight, not quite having finished her refit, or her repairs. Let's see. You can probably blow a large hole in the Ariadne, yes, you just can't hit it yet. My firing range is 26 kilometers, which puts you, my friend, into firing range. Those 17s might be able to also do some damage to the Lippa. Yeah, but not the main belt. Main belt's off limits. Okay, these guns now reload in a blistering 24 seconds. That's all that I need. 24 seconds. Uh, if you'd be so kind. Shoot. I don't know why I have to tell my ships to do this. It's not hard. Just point the guns. Start blasting. The Apni, I understand, takes a bit more or a bit less distance to actually open up. My strategy here is to try and inflict some damage on them. Have some damage instability. They've seen the Lippa now. I think their reload is not really particularly stellar, seeing as they don't have a well-trained crew yet. I mean, they can't have one. You got me, your range is 14, so we need you to get a little closer. Lippa only has... Less than 2% chance to hit. That's probably because this thing is so fast. Yeah, minus 87% for target fast speed. And because they're maneuvering, there's another debuff of about 30%. Hmm. What's all that secondary fire? Oh, it's your 16 8.2s. Oof. 1, 2, 3, 4. Interesting setup here. Barbette. Firing over every other gun that they placed on the deck. Okay. So this guy's fast. Heavily armed. Um, as in big guns. And it carries a lot of guns. That means that they're lacking something. And it could be protection. This potentially opens up the way to pepper them with high explosive. We might be able to inflict some burning damage on them. Go high explosive. 14 kilometers. Come on, you're in range. Open up already. Got me. So, is it because your chance to hit is so poor? We're gonna close in a bit more. Go 13 kilometers or so. There we go. 1.8% chance to hit. That's with a full veteran crew. I am shooting through my own smoke, which is definitely not helpful. But I was expecting a bit more. Lippa, I need you to turn more broadside. We got 1% chance to hit. Okay, let's just wait a little and gain some information on them. So we can see what we're fighting and what their weak spots are. I don't believe they have any torpedo launchers. At least I wasn't able to discern any. So what is your weak spot? You've got a high speed, you got an awful turning circle. You're running diesel one engines with oil two. You got two funnels, so you got 100% engine efficiency likely. Krupp two. And it's a glass cannon. No four belt. No, sorry, half, no, yeah. 0.8 inch four belt. Zero inch aft belt. Three and a half inch main deck, zero four deck, zero aft deck, zero superstructure. Uh, standard bulkhead, spacious quarters, an okay offset. 
pitch and roll are within normal limits. Mm, firing light shells. They have an enhanced reloading, putting their reload at a bit over two minutes. But these things put their reload at eight. They put two inch guns at ten seconds. That's more dangerous. But that superstructure, rather the lack of superstructure armor, has options. Same as the bow and fore deck, uh, the, the bow and stern. Because if I can pen those, I can slow this thing down. And I think that's going to be critical here. As it will allow me to speed up or slow down and dictate the range of the engagement. Which is what I'm going to need if I'm facing really big guns. Northumberland has a trained crew. Good lord, there's a lot of sailors aboard. 2297. Overpen. Okay. So unexpected. I got flooding on Ariadne. Smoke. See, if the Northumberland decides to run, there's not a whole lot that I can do about it right now. Because neither of my ships are fast enough to catch it. This is why I want to flood it. I need some way to slow it down. And I'm not getting through that main belt, which means the engines are temporarily off limits. I won't be able to catch those. They got well over 2,000 shells on the 8 inchers. I don't care about their 17 inch guns, those are just Mark 1s. They're inaccurate, they reload slowly, they're not that impressive. I mean, I've used them myself on my own ships, they're not that impressive. It's the 8s. This is the danger. Mark 4. Good reload, good base accuracy. I think the Northumberland's gonna run. He really isn't cutting it. They have lost line of sight to the Lippa. Okay. Lippa can barely hit anything at half and half a percent. It's the Ariadne that's gonna have to do some damage. Partial pen. 0.4 right. Origin. Doesn't even say. 12 clicks out. This is an interesting encounter. This is a challenge. I still hold 1100 shells on the Ariadne. I also hold a bit more water on the inside of the Ariadne than I was expecting. Which means I can only do 33 knots, making the Northumberland 6 knots faster than the Ariadne. And 5 knots faster than the Lippa. Cases like these I would like a star class battlecruiser. I've decided to build a few more of those, because they have served me so well so far. I would very much appreciate having more of them. I've also sent out more of my fleet to the seas to try and intercept more convoys and put more pressure on the British, because they're just barely moving. Half a percent chance to hit on the 17 inches. Hold up, are you turning? Somewhat. I got a four deck pen on the Ariadne. Gone are the days where the Ariadne was the one that took down the battlecruiser. See, they're almost out of range of the Lippa. At least out of the effective range. Sea state is not particularly helpful. Ariadne disengaged. They've already lost line of sight to the lip. If I can make them break line of sight to the Ariadne, they should be turning around, and then we can push back in. And yes, I do realize how dangerous it is to push into a battlecruiser. What sort of radar system you got? Radar 1. Sonar 1. Stereoscopic 3 rangefinder? Now that's interesting. There, they lost sight of the Ariadne. They spotted the Lippa, though. Lippa's only 18 clicks out now, getting a whole 1% chance to hit. Whoa! 1% chance to hit, but we got it. Engine out. Flooding. Fire. Rudder damaged. You're gonna be slowing down there, sir. 
eventually. It's 50,000 tons. It's not going to just stop. Got 2% chance to hit the Ariadne now. Ariadne, you can shoot! Good lord. 6% chance to hit. Now we're getting somewhere. Wipe out this glass cannon. The lip is only 10 clicks out. And even with her massive main belt, is proving to be susceptible to the 17-inch guns. But the Northumberland is down to 26% damage. Brew 5%, so that's not going to cut it. Let's go for AP. We can damage them with semi armor piercing shells. Look at that. Flooding is intensifying. That Lumberland slowed down to 28 knots. Damage to the funnel is also going to prove to be pretty important here. Ariadne, get back here. Lippa, do what you do best. Use your 11 inchers and rip them to shreds. Structural 66, speed 28 knots. There goes your fast target bonus. It's still about 35% buff for them. It's no longer 80 something percent. So we're gaining. You're showing me your stern. Your stern was unarmored. AP has still ricochet off. Let's go for a bit of HE. There you go. There's the secondary tower. More fires are being set. Your accuracy is all over the place because they got a 50% damage and stability modifier. Yeah, the Lippa might be relatively old. At least the main hull is. The refits are not. She still has it where it counts. That's in the guns. These 11 inches are proven to be so useful. And the platform is ridiculously survivable same time. 44% structural. Speed down to 24 knots. Now I get to decide when and where we fight. Ariadne, push right in. Lipa, go back to armor piercing, considering your HE ran out. Range. 12. 49% chance to hit. That's better. Thumberland flooding, damage to main guns. Just listing. Look at what the Lippa is doing. Is this 11k damage? It's almost exclusively the Lippa. She did 10k of that. Beautiful. Thumberland slowing down again, 21 knots. It says there's more flooding, but I don't see it. Three damaged engines, 14 knots. I'm kind of hoping she starts listing so badly that she can't shoot anymore, but I'm not seeing it yet. Ariadne, shoot! Jesus. I guess the Ariadne's captain is having a brain fart moment. Chance to hit still 48. Come on. We get a deck pen. One good hit through the four deck, and the ship should start to flood there as well. Ariadne, eight clicks out. Secondaries are still firing at me. The eights. I have a bow armor of four and a half inch plus 139%. Fairly well protected. This eight, however, can do quite a bit of damage. Shell type. AP capitalistic, that's gonna bounce off. Those shells are extremely sensitive to ricochets. If you come in at an angle like this, like what, 87 degrees? 83. You get a very high ricochet chance. Which means that the enemy has an almost 100% chance to ricochet off of your bow, and they're still firing armor piercing. So it might be the Ariadne that delivers the final blow, as the Lippa angled a bit too much. There we go, now her 11 inches are back in the fight. 
And together, they did it. They took down the Northumberland. Glorious. We don't need anything bigger than a light cruiser and a heavy cruiser to get five, almost 6,000 victory points. Did cost some damage on both of these ships. Did a lot of damage to the British economy. And probably did even more so to the British morale. Yep, there we go. They're losing more transports now that I have more ships here. I got five. Oh, sorry, I got two there, two there. I have a larger fleet here. And the Italians are also still losing transports. Yet their economy is back at about 29 billion. And I thought it was a bit lower before. One month later, I'm not sure why, but there's suddenly peace. A peace treaty has been signed between myself and the Italians. I didn't sign off on this. War still continues against the British. I've been at war apparently with the Italians for quite a while. Um, I don't think I've had a single fight against the Italians. They also got some fairly expensive battleships there, 181 million. But I'll just take your 112 million and go. It's fine. So. Uh... <laughs> The Austro-Hungarians are murdering the Italian economy. Yeah, 28 billion. We just lost another billion there. Look at that. How many ships do the Austro-Hungarians have? 111 again. They're building 73 more? What the hell? Okay. I'm also building some more ships. Uh, it's going to take me a while. Because they're pretty big ships. Yeah, I got the battlecruisers Moltke, Leipzig, Lauenburg, and Prince Adel Friedrich. As the battlecruisers. And then we have 10 heavy cruisers of the Rhineland class coming out. There are also new battleships. If I am not mistaken. We had ordered those things a while ago. There's the stars. Yeah, the Siegfrieds. With eight 16-inch guns, displacing uh, almost 150,000 tons. These things took, I think, almost about four years to complete. Yeah. They are floating gun batteries when it comes to secondary armament. And their primary armament is eight 16s. Their secondary armament is 24 8-inch guns. So that is 12 per side. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, six. Yeah, 12 per side. And then we get another eight 5-inch guns per side and another six 3-inch guns per side. They are not quick, 27 knots. They are very well protected with anti torp 4 and should thus prove to be very useful when it comes to engaging the Austro-Hungarians. I am interested to see how much I can refit them now. Because I want to refit both the Sea Adlers and the Siegfried. Considering that they... The Siegfrieds, that is. Um, they have been under construction for a while. Here. Ship design. Yeah, I ordered them in 1936. We have four years of new technology since. So let's see what I can upgrade. Perhaps gas turbines would make for an interesting option for them. What would happen if I go for gas turbines? No. Makes them heavier, not lighter. Okay, interesting. Gear turbines make them too heavy. So diesels it is. Um, you got auto-loading one. Current reload 65 seconds. With auto-reload, we're going to put that on 58 seconds. You got sonar two, which is the most advanced we have. Electro-hydraulic turrets, yes. Maximum HE shells. That's less than ideal. Because semi armor piercing should do the trick just fine against the Austro Hungarian cruisers. Um, these fire every 14 seconds. Am I really trying to burn stuff down with this ship? No, it might, might work, actually. Okay, what else can I fit? Oh, they got a really wide beam. That's why I'm not able to make them faster. Right. 15.8 inch main belt, 8.14, 6.7 aft, 5 inch superstructure. Yeah, so aside from the reload, there is not a whole lot that I can actually change. 
give them a bit more armor. I might be able to give them like two more knots. That ought to do it. I hope this isn't going to take forever to refit, though. Sometimes the game responds a little weird when you switch engines back and forth and end up with the same type. It could take quite a while to refit. Sadly, they don't say how long it's going to refit. So let's refit the Siegfried and check. Four months, that's fine. Okay, we're going to refit the Kurfürst Friedrich, uh, sorry, Kurfürst Wilhelm as well. And I want to update the Sey Adlers from 1935. They've been doing very, very well. Ariadne being one of the most famous ships of her class. So let's see what favors we can do her in return. I'm considering giving her an, uh, a gas turbine because she's doing 37 knots. And that saves me a lot. If I upgrade their funnels to thick funnel 2, I can get 100% engine efficiency. I can push the ship even faster than 37 knots. First though, better guns, better sonar. Uh, the amount of ammo and the type of ammo that they carry is perfectly fine. Electrohydraulic steering can go to Electrohydro 2. Currently turning circle is 433 and that would buff it. Not at all. That's unusual. Oh, course change time changes. That's it. Not your turning circle. So course change goes from 27.1 seconds to 20. Yeah, it's half. It's 0.4 seconds. Not worth it. Better shaft does help. And uh, let's go for more speed. Can we do 40 knots? Not 47, 40. Yes, we can. Engine efficiency is dropping. That's oh, too big. 77%. Can we do 42? No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Okay, 40 knots it is. Then we're going to use the additional displacement to add more range. And that means that I get better naval missions or better, more favorable missions. As for the rest of the ship, perfectly fine. She's proven to be very reliable. So that's the refit to the Sea Adlers. Let's make sure that these guys get all the attention they deserve because they've been instrumental in the blockade of the British. I haven't shown you nearly all the battles that I've done, but more often than not, a Sea Adler is involved. Now, that does mean that I currently have an okay number of ships, but I can probably bring out another battleship to assist here, like the Eager. I am, however, spending a lot. Let's go to finances and reduce research expenditure a little bit. There are new big guns coming up, but I'm not sure what. The last one I got was the Mark 5 10 inch, I think. Not particularly interesting. Aegir, just being out to sea, immediately encounters a Hector class battlecruiser, which apparently is also a new boat. Also very quick, 37.9. Relatively small guns at 14.3 inch. Um, an interesting secondary armament of 45 3.1-inch guns. Green level of crew. They're not very expensive for the top speed that they have. So I wonder what they saved on. What did the British not give them? If they gave them this many guns and this much speed, I suspect they did not give them armor. Interesting that they're immediately in range. They also have detected me. Eager already has a 15% chance to hit? Wow. Slow down, Eager. I know you're really much, much slower than this battlecruiser. So, intercepting them is not going to work anyway. We're just going to have to hit them. And for that, we need all the bonuses we can get. Turn. Overpen. Right through the aft deck. Okay. Interesting. Turn. I want more guns on target. Not stern to fire. Partial pen. Fire. This range or Wow. Our HE might be able to do some work. Fifteen percent Let's go. Next. Chance to pen me. Surprising. Six percent. 
think that's telling the whole story. There you go. Full pen. 600 damage. Next salvo is going to be high explosive. Ooh, that was a good pen. 1348 damage. I think the British are experimenting with all sorts of different battle cruisers now. I don't exactly know what they want. We saw the Northumberland, and now I'm seeing the. Uh, well, whatever this is. Looks like a reduced beam. Lots and lots of secondaries, no visible torpedo launchers. That's good. Saves me the trouble. I don't have to dodge. This close? Back to AP. Should be able to pen them. Really quite close now. My guns reload in 44 seconds. Remarkably resilient to fire. Uh, they have one inch superstructure, 17.3 inch main belt. Holy crap. They're equipped with a generation 2 radar, stereoscopic 5 ra uh, rangefinder, sonar 2. Whoa. Turrets, electrohydraulic, reloading standard. That's where you're saving your money. Geared turbines, not diesels. Balanced boilers, no extensive auxiliary engines. Uh, standard bulkheads, yet spacious crew. This is a pretty good ship. Reinforced bulkheads, anti torp 5? Or bet 4? Holy shit, dude. You must be expecting some threat. I just didn't expect the A-gear. I can still kill you. That's exactly what's going to happen. And your guns, under this angle, are not effective. All I need to do is go bow in. And push these guys. Which is interesting, because I'm doing about... 60% of what they can do is speed-wise. The AI is not using their speed to maintain distance. Even if they did, I doubt it would save them. Then. Then. Ricochet angle is not great. I got uh, capitalistic shells for HE. Fires are not that likely with bulkheads like these and a massive amount of crew. Let's sneak up on this side. Increase the flank. Sneak up on that. Hmm. More flooding on the Eager. Just imagine, they spent. I think about two years or so building the Hector, and I take it apart in about 20 minutes of in game time. That's cool. I barely knew her. Boom. Gone. Hector did 1.2k damage, I did 13k. Let's see what the build time is on these. If the ship stats should reflect that. 22 months. 22 months, taken apart in 20 minutes. Nice ship. Shame if something happened to it. How many more ships do we have the British building? It's, uh, I wonder where they get all the crew. Another Northumberland. Okay, fine. I got three battle cruisers. Sorry, two battle cruisers, a, a battleship, and a heavy cruiser. After that, I hope to be able to check how many ships they're building. Because I'm seeing all the new ones. I'm more interested in what they currently have. Oh, and they're detected as well. Where are you at then? Wow, you're 30, 32 kilometers out. Prince Regens can shoot that far. The stars absolutely cannot. Okay, you're going to move up. You're just going to follow the battleship, it's fine. Prince Regen's not going to be doing much more than 27 knots anyway. 
I could see about refitting these to be faster. They have another slot for the funnel. So I could refit them to have a gas turbine. And make them faster. And potentially the same thing for the star. So we're going to have to refit a couple of ships now. HE, shoot. Fast trying 11 inch high explosive guns. And the number ones were the ones with the 17.4 inch? 17.7. Massive guns for a battle cruiser. By my standards. In fact, they got bigger guns than I do. What the hell? The British spies finally get their hands on the big guns doctrine. And have they decided that it is in fact for them a fitting strategy? Makes sense. These things are blisteringly quick, but so are my ships. I can also do 39 knots. 16 kilometers out, 59, 7, 6, 5, 4. Go get him. We've landed one hit. I expect some more than that. AP. Miss, 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 miss. They're running away from the battleship. Overpen. It's interesting, an 11 inch overpen on the foredeck. Normally, that would be quite surprising, but these are the ones that are glass cannons, so. In this case, it's not that spectacular. 13 kilometers out, and they're slowly running. Oh, they're turning back. Good. Very good. Opportunity. Opportunity. Go on. Get him. Franz Regen only has a 1.7% chance to hit. She's too slow. These modern British battle cruisers are just... They're a league different from what I'm used to. chance to hit the star. Range is to 13. What's your speed at? 39.1. Good grief. Okay, let's go full in. We can close the gap a little. And also by going bow in, they should have less chance to pen me. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Less chance to pen. down. Go for HE. 13-8. Just need to hit him with one flooding hit or one engine damaged. That's all I'm needing. All that I want. This thing is so fast that it's not making it easy. 93% modifier. 39.2. Take me a while, isn't it? 0.7% chance for the Prince Regent. Oh boy. 49 million for these, 136 million for these. Ah, that's better. More damage will pile on. Not even floodings or engine damage, but they do slow down. And they get damage and stability. 39 knots, they're now as fast as we are. Not faster. Even going. Team one. I think they've lost the will to fight. They're trying to shoot the battle cruiser. But their accuracy is so bad that they're not even bothering. They need a better firing solution to warrant a shot of the 17.7 inches. 2,235 damage with HE. Pretty ludicrous amounts. Range 12.8. We're seeing about 5% accuracy now. We're still at 
still running 39? Still have 500 shells on these ships, so I'm not worried about the amount of ammo. These things are so incredibly expensive that I really want them dead. I'm still not exactly sure how correlated a ship price and a victory point status is, victory points award, but I believe it is tied into how expensive your ship is. The the sunk the sinking one then. Five percent. Slightly slower, but point 0.1 not. Partial. While later, we are closing to within 10 kilometer range. And at this point, I am getting more confident that I'll be able to catch the guy. He's down to 37.9 knots, which means I am closing ever so slightly. And we are landing more and more hits, as the accuracy on the star is now 12%, and on her sister Ostmark it is 8.9%, so we're getting there. I have tried AP, it still bounces off sadly, but as you can see, her stern is starting to get a bit more damaged, as the rudder takes damage. And there is the hit that I was looking for, flooding. 37.4, 37.3, 37.2... This was quite the chase, and the star did take some damage. Nothing serious. It was a 17-inch gun that I think ricocheted off. Yeah, aft deck partial pen. Main deck partial pen. But there, at this point, is no hope for this tiger. This tiger is very quickly going to go extinct. She's flooding... Her speed's falling to less than 34 knots soon. Still very badly angled, so not good for my AP shells. I've been saving those. More flooding, 34 knots. This is what I wanted. Let's go get him. My accuracy in this battle is dreadful. I'm now starting to get some slightly better accuracy. Because now we're starting to hit land about 60, almost 70% of our shells. But good lord, that took me a while. 33 knots. Can we pen them? Yeah, overpen them. Well, I suppose that counts. Or, no, 29.8. 29.6. End the battle. Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Your expensive battle cruiser extracted from this fight. Not happening. Let's wait until we pull alongside the tiger and then use the HE. Oh, sorry, the AP to kill them off. 24 knots. Push in. Yeah, it's the 5 inchers and the 3 inchers that have done a lot of damage against the battle cruiser. Yeah. Interesting. Range three kilometers. I'm almost considering building a specific interceptor battleship for guys like these, but it would be a very much a niche ship. And 39 knots is blisteringly quick as is. So building a ship that could do like 45 knots so I can have an easier time catching this would be an extremely niche, very overpriced ship, especially for what it's going to need to do. So I'm not going to go with that. As tempting as it is, it would be not exactly a ship that I would use very often. Like a police interceptor, you don't use it very often. It's nice to have it as a tool, but you got to have the tool on the front line, in my case, at the right time. For all I know, is going to end up chasing convoys, which would be funny, but not necessarily an ideal use of funds. If you build a really, really fast ship, you're going to pay a really, really high price. Anyway, let's see if I can upgrade the stars to be faster, because that would be less expensive than building a whole new battlecruiser class. Fine. Auto-resolve this. What? 
did you do? Heavy damage to the Siegfried? That's the new ship. What the hell? Withdraw. Failure. What happens if I ultra resolve this? Better not lose the comet. Huh. Lost the DD. Okay. Anyway, um I have the where's the latest version? Where's the latest version? Star. Have I not refit them ever? Hmm. Okay, let's have a look. What can we do with the Siegfrieds? Should be some upgrade that we can give him. Gas turbines would potentially make them faster. But engine efficiency and no room for another funnel doesn't really make it appealing. When they're just using diesels, they are slightly more expensive, but otherwise fine. Okay, so that's a no. What about the Prinz Regent? Because the Prinz Regent has maybe a bit more leeway there. Because she has that additional funnel space in the secondary tower. Let's see, where's the latest version of the Prince Regent? Here. Prince Regent 935 and 1932. Sometimes this shit doesn't make sense. Refit. If I give you gas turbines, uh, can I easily push it to like 32 knots? Yes. 35. Whoa. Fast boy. Fast boy detected. Let's give them the auto turrets, electrical, better sonar. You got the better rangefinder and radar. That's good. This is going to give them a whole lot more utility. Because they're suddenly not only reloading pretty quick at 54 seconds, they're also really fast to get to the target. This is going to make the Prince Regent a lot more useful. It's going to be expensive to refit them with gas turbines, but I'm willing to make that trade. And I'm pleasantly surprised to see that their engine efficiency doesn't drop that much. Refit all four. How long is that going to take? Two months. Oh, easy. Politics. 194. 24 billion only. Minus 24% growth. Yikes. The British are building 30 new ships? <sighs> okay. Now, what about the Siegfried? I know she's repairing. 13 months? Good lord. She must have been torpedoed by that light cruiser, according to the Ultra Resolve. Yet, that should have been negated by the hefty torpedo blister that she has. Damn, next time I'm going to take those fights myself. Big guns. Mark 13. Mark 5 13 is not great. Okay, well that's going to be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon for the next episode.